believe in the Lord We'll pay off After a while Well, God bless you. God bless you, my friends. We're so thankful that you've tuned in to another Outreach for Christ, Serving the Lord broadcast, where the young people call it O-F-C-S-T-L. Well, the words over this ministry is Zechariah 4 and 6. For it's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And we pray that this program is a blessing to you, we pray that this program is a word of encouragement for you. But above all, we pray that someone will come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So come on, let's go into today's broadcast. There will be mountains that you may have to climb and there will be battles that you may have to fight but victory or defeat is up to you to decide how do you expect to win if you never try but I just I just want you to know that I love you so much, and Jesus loves you so much too. And if you're listening to me this afternoon for the first time, I want you to know that I don't care if you're from corporate America or the crack house. Yeah, welfare millionaire, I stop by to let you know that Jesus can change your life. Let's go into the Word of God this afternoon. The Word of God is found in the Old Testament, the book of Job. The book of Job, chapter number 23, beginning at verse number 3, and we will hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us at this hour. The book of Job, chapter number 23, beginning at verse number 3, and it says, Job is speaking here. He says, Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. Verse number 8. Behold, I go forward, but he is not there, and backward, 
but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he doeth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand, that I cannot see him. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he had tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. I just want to talk to you just for a little while this afternoon from the subject of you can come back from it. Amen. You need to just tell yourself that, you know, just lay your hands on yourself and say, I can come back from this. Yes, you ma'am. Yes, you sir. You can come back from it. Father God, speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You can come back from it. My brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, in the year 1978, a Jewish rabbi by the name of Harold Kushner wrote a book entitled, When Bad Things Happen to Good People. In the book, he deals with one of the principal problems of theodicy. Theodicy, the, the question of why. Why? Why of God, why if God is so good that he would allow such bad things to happen to good people? Why if God is so good that he would allow such horrible things to happen to those of us who love him, to those of us who trust in him, to those of us who are faithful over a few things. Why God is so good that he allows such bad things to happen to good people. My brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, think it not strange to ask the question why? For even our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when he was hanging on Calvary's cross, uttered the words, Eloi, Eloi, la sabachthani. My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? And if our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ can ask the question why, think it not strange to ask the question why. My brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, how many of us, like Rabbi Kushner, and the patriarch of the Bible, Jacob, has had to wrestle with God concerning life's questions? Yeah. But have you at least considered the remote possibility that the enemies drive toward your emotional, your mental, your spiritual, or even your physical demise just may have backfired on him? Uh, yeah. That what the devil meant for evil in your life, God is going to turn it for good? That the, some of the stuff that has kept you up all night has had the spiritual impact in your life that has taught you how to fight. It has taught you how to war good warfare. It has taught you how to endure hardness as a good soldier. Oh, my brothers and sisters, that the whole thing, it was divinely orchestrated by God, not to kill you, but to build you. Uh, Job was such a person. The Bible teaches us that this man of God, he was a man that feared God and eschewed evil. He shunned evil. He stayed away from evil. He prayed to God. He fasted to God. Uh, he, he sacrificed unto God. But what do you do when you're trying to live right, but then something bad happens? What do you do when you come to church and you're, you're faithful? You, you give your tithes and you sow your seed. You're living right. But all of a sudden, trouble happens. Oh, I come to talk to you, ma'am, and I come to talk to you, sir, this afternoon and tell you that you can come back from it. Somebody that's listening to me this afternoon, you're down. You're out. Life has beaten you down. Somebody listening to me this afternoon, you may have slipped up and you may have fallen. You may be a backslider. Oh, uh, yeah, and the enemy has counted you out. But God sent me here by his spirit to tell you that you can come back from it. What do you do when you seek God while you're down and you're asking God to intervene in your situation? 
just as Job did. Listen to what the man of God says in verse number 3 of chapter 23 in the book of Job. He says, oh, that I knew where I might find him. In other words, Job was seeking the face of God. Now, my Bible readers, you, you know the story about Job. There was a time when the devil presented himself to God. And God said, have you considered my servant Job? There is none like him in all the land. Ah, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. And that God gave the enemy leeway to attack this man of God. And I come to tell you, ma'am, I come to tell you, sir, that what you're going through is only because your name came up in glory. Yeah, it's only because you've been living right. The Bible teaches us that it rains on the just as well as the unjust. Job said these words, Behold, I go forward, but he is not there. And backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he doeth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand that I cannot see him. My brothers and sisters, certain things in life that you and I will go through that will make us question sometimes our relationship with God. Is God really there? And somebody that's listening to me this afternoon, you've been asking that question. God, where are you? But Job said these words. His faith began to kick in, and he says these words. He says, but he knoweth the way that I take. For when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. God knows what you're going through, man. God knows what you're going through, sir. Oh, think it not strange to ask the question why, but what do you do when you see God, but he doesn't come when you want him to come? What do you do when the bill collector is knocking on your door? What do you do when, when there's no food in the refrigerator and you're seeking God and you're, you, you're a churchgoer, you love God. Job loved God, but Job lost everything. He lost his wealth. He lost his family. He lost everything that he owned. But he still trusted in God. And I come to tell somebody, your faith is on trial. Your faith is on trial. What you're going through is for the glory of God. Oh, you all remember Martha, Mary, and Lazarus? Oh, they loved Jesus. They had a personal relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know the story. Jesus used to stop by their house, visit with them. He used to dine with them, go in the kitchen, make some Kool-Aid. Oh, come on, you know the story. They loved Jesus, and Jesus loved them. Oh, the word came to Jesus, he whom thou lovest is sick. Now let's look at Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. They loved Jesus, believed that he was the Son of God. In other words, they, they, they were saints of God, just like we are. We're born again. We're Christian believers. We're saints of God. They were saints of God. Jesus got a word, he whom thou lovest is sick. What do you do when you're a sick saint? <laughs> what do you do when you're a sick saint? And somebody, your mind just automatically went to a physical sickness. But what do you do when you're a sick saint and you're, you're sick emotionally? What do you do when you're a sick saint and you're sick financially? What do you do when you're a sick saint? Oh my God, and you're sick from a divorce. What do you do when you're a sick saint and you're, you're sick from your children acting crazy? Oh uh, God, and God doesn't come when you want him to come. And he does what I call, he purposely procrastinates. <laughs> Good God, help me Holy Ghost. And God right now is purposely procrastinating in your situation. Good God from Zion. And the Bible says that Lazarus died. The sick saint died. Thought it was all over. Good God from Zion. Job's friends thought it was all over for Job. Falsely accused him. Oh, but Job came back from it. Jesus said, roll away the stone, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus came back from it. Let me, let me give you a little history lesson. And I'm about to tell my age right now. 
1978, Muhammad Ali was the champion of the world. And he fought an up-and-coming brawler by the name of Leon Spinks. And you know how Ali was. He said, I'm going to whoop him, I'm going to beat him. They got in the ring. Leon Spinks won a split decision over Muhammad Ali and became the champion of the world. Oh, but something happened. They scheduled a rematch. And in the second rematch, Muhammad Ali, while he was training, he studied the film and he, he learned from his mistakes. And in the second rematch, Muhammad Ali came out victorious and regained the championship of the world. And I come to tell you, ma'am, and I come to tell you, sir, you may have got knocked down in the first match with Satan. Oh, you may have slid, slipped up and backslid on God. You may have messed up on some a morality issue or, or this or that or the other. And the enemy is standing over you with his hands up in victory. But I come to tell you, as long as there's life, there's hope. I come to tell you that we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he stands before the Father and says, oh, Father, give them a rematch. Because I know what's in him and I know what's in her. Give them a rematch. Same thing happened in my life. The devil thought he had me. Thought he knocked me out. Stood over me with his hands up in victory. Said I shut him up. He's no longer going to win souls for the kingdom of God. But Jesus Christ, hallelujah, scheduled a rematch. Hallelujah, glory to his name. I hear you loud and clear, sir. Scheduled a rematch. And then the rematch I came out victorious. Hallelujah, because now I know that the weapons of my warfare, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And I come to tell you, ma'am, I come to tell you, sir, that you can come back from it. Yes, Job came back from it. Lazarus came back from it. Peter came back from it when he denied Christ. Paul came back from it. But most importantly, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ came back from it. <laughs> the devil thought he won. Throwing a party in hell. Jesus showed up and took the keys of death in hell. Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Oh, death, where is thy sting? You can come back from it, ma'am. You can come back from it, sir. The devil has thought he has knocked you out. He, 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 he thought that you're out of the game, that you're out of the Christian walk. But I've come to talk to the backslider this afternoon and tell you, God said you can come back from it. My well, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, somebody that's looking at me right now, you're a backslider. Why don't you just give your heart back to Christ? Why don't you just repent of your sin? The devil hasn't won. As long as there's life, there's hope. And I've got good news for you, sir. I've got good news for you, ma'am. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. I come to tell you, it's not over until God says it's over in your life. They thought it was over. Martha came running out to Jesus. Lord, if, if, if you'd have been here, my brother would not have died. Martha thought it was about them, but it was really about him. And I come to tell you, ma'am, and I come to tell you, sir, that what you're going through is not even about you, but it's about the glory of God. Hallelujah. I heard some older saints sing the song that he may not come when you want, him, but he's always on time. Isn't that wonderful? Somebody just need to praise God right there. How you been seeking God, and he hasn't showed up yet. But I come to tell you, hold on, child. You're closer than you were yesterday. I come to tell you, be not weary in well-doing. For in due season you will reap if you faint not. <laughs> Sister Ingles just sung the song earlier. He didn't bring me this far to leave me. And he didn't bring you this far to leave you, ma'am. He didn't bring you this far to leave you, sir. My brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just simply saying to you, that your faith is on trial. Let me put it to you this way. If you are able to value the onset of anything unpleasant 
or difficult. And they, they usually grasp its value only in retrospect. Okay, let me hairstylize that for you. Most people cannot understand why they're going through something, but it's only when they come out of it that they realize why they had to go through it. Can I give you a quick testimony right quick? One Monday morning, I woke up to weeping. I woke up to crying. And I looked up and it was my wife crying. And I said, honey, what's wrong? And she, she was crying, and through her tears and anguish, she said, our granddaughter is missing. Immediately, we, as Christian believers, we fell down on our knees and began to seek the face of God. Day one went by, and after so many hours, um, they will put out an Amber Alert. So they issued an Amber Alert. Day two went by. Day three, the FBI got involved, and they was talking about um, sex trafficking and all these other things that the enemy was putting in our ears. But all along, we fell down on our knees and began to seek the face of God. Day four went by, and day four was really the toughest for me. That's a feeling I, I don't wish on anybody. Because all of this did not happen to me until after God told me to come on television. I never thought about coming on television. I was praying, asking Lord, Lord, what do you want me to do? I was asking God to put me back on the radio because I was on the radio for years in the early 90s. God spoke to me and said, why are you praying to go on the radio when I told you I put you on television? And immediately as I began to step out on faith regarding this television ministry, because this is God's ministry, I've already given it back to God. For it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Day four was the toughest for me. And immediately after God told me what to do concerning this ministry, my wife and I came under attack. Granddaughter's missing. Can't eat, can't sleep. It's a feeling I wish on no man, no woman. Having a missing child. But day four, later in the evening, it hit me. And I told my wife, I believe that our faith is on trial. Because I remember my pastor, the pastor of this church, Outreach for Christ Christian Center, my pastor, Thomas L. Stillman had been teaching us for two months on faith. <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. I hear you, sir. And it hit me, and I told my wife, I believe that this is a trying of our faith. Friday came. My daughter, who lives in Akron, Ohio, my granddaughter was living with her dad in California. And you know, in California, they got thousands of missing children. Missing children here, missing children there, missing children everywhere. Devil was telling us that she was just going to be another number, another statistic. My daughter living in Akron, Ohio, she caught a plane to California that Friday. Friday morning came. I woke up hearing my wife saying, got a phone call saying, baby, is that you? Is that you, baby? It, it was my granddaughter. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. The moment that my daughter landed in California was the moment my wife received a call from my granddaughter. That it was a trying of our faith. But not only that, I was up under attack again, my wife and I. Got an urgent call from my youngest son's school. Said, hurry to the hospital, we've called the ambulance, your son has had a seizure. Um, getting ready, gathering up everything, all while I'm praying, rebuking that devil because I recognized him. Seeing that no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. No weapon formed against this family shall be able to prosper. And I tell you what, no weapon formed against this ministry shall be able to prosper. Got to the school, the ambulance was there, willing my youngest son out. Never had a seizure, never had no history of seizures, no history of seizures in our family, but I recognized it was the enemy. Got him to the hospital, ran all kinds of tests. 
couldn't find anything. To God be all of the glory. You know, sometimes we, we look at people and see where they are and says that I want to be like him, I want to be like her. But you never know what they went through to get to where they are. It's easy to look on somebody from the outside. But what I love about God is that he looks at our heart. And I come this afternoon to tell you, and I didn't plan on giving this testimony, but I come to tell you that you can get up from it, that your faith is on trial. You can get up from it, sir. You can get up from it. I love you. This word, I didn't just um, think of this word to, to come on here and, uh, and, and try to, um, to, to look good before you and to preach something that I just thought about. But God told me, tell them on this day, at this time, that they can get up from it. Because God knows you was going to be looking, man. God knows you was going to be looking this afternoon, sir. The enemy thought he, it's over for you. And you may think in your mind, he's planting seeds in your mind and thoughts in your mind that I'm done, it's over. People are gonna talk about me. I know what I'm talking about because I've been through it. The enemy thought he'd wipe me out, thought he'd shut me up. Name on the signpost. <laughs> Say, don't go back to church, people are gonna talk about you. But I come to tell you, ma'am, and I come to tell you, sir, come boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain help in the time of need. The devil trying to keep you away from God, but God sent me to hear not by might, nor by power, but by his spirit to tell you, come unto him. Come unto Jesus, all ye labor and are heavy laden. He'll give you rest. Take his yoke upon you. Learn of him, for he's meek and lonely in heart. I come to tell you, you can get up from it. Come on and get up from there this afternoon. The devil is a liar. I speak over you, ma'am, and I speak over you, sir, that you shall get up. And you shall go forth. Paul said it like this. Forgetting those things which are behind me, I reach forward to those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And I come to tell you, ma'am, and I come to tell you, sir, put it behind you. Come on and go forth in the name of the Lord. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I feel the Holy Ghost. Come on and get up from there. Put down that bottle, put down that cigarette, put down that marijuana, put it down, put down the moonshine, put down that um, um, sex, that adultery, that fornication, put it down. You can get up from it. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I speak over you and I rebuke that lying devil. Devil, loose your hold. The blood of Jesus is against you in Jesus' name. Come on, you can get up from it. May God bless you, and may heaven smile upon you. God bless you. Well, my friends, that's all the time we have for today. And I truly hope that you've been blessed and touched by today's broadcast. And on behalf of my lovely wife, Lady Lisa Hairston, and myself, we want you to know that we love you and that we're praying for you. And always remember, serving the Lord will pay off after a while. God bless you.